Now, we have to get the video hardware working, with the video drivers. And the easiest way to do this is going to install the default CentOS 5.2 software into another virtual machine, because then we just copy out all the drivers that come by default, and that will probably have the things we need. So I'm just going to walk through installing CentOS 5.2, just like I did before with the creating a virtual machine for the IM. And the only thing is you need to actually have the CentOS 5.2 install CDs or the install ISOs and you can Google those and get them for free because they are free. So create a virtual machine. Next, next, install operating system later. Again, sent to us version five and earlier. Give it a name. Next, give it as much or as little memory as you want. Next, 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 next. You're done with that. Now we'll need to set the CD drive to the install ISO. Disk one. and power it on. Hit return or enter. Skip the test. And we'll just go through the installer. Click next, 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 yes. And we're going to click next, yes. Click next, click next. Set a root password. Don't forget it. Here we're going to choose a default, but then we're going to click on customize now and then hit next so leave that as gnome leave this actually we can get rid of some things here get rid of games and entertainment graphical or i'm sorry graphics and we can well let's put that back in there let's I'll get rid of office productivity and development we want development libraries development tools gnome software development and Let's also do legacy software development. We can get rid of the Fortran, but you can also keep it. It doesn't really matter. And let's go to Sir X software development and the servers. I don't think we need anything here. We can go to base system and let's get rid of dial up networking. And that's good. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Next. Click next to start the software installer. And here we go. And now we just have to, when it tells us to, we have to swap out the disks the disk images. So we just have to go to the um, settings and change the CD to point to the next disk and the installer set. So we'll put in disk two and I think disk three will need also. Put okay when you've done that. Make sure it's connected. Okay, put insert disk three using the virtual machine settings. Okay. 
Click Reboot. Now we have to go through the post install settings. Click Next. Click Disabled for the firewall. Next. Make, choose Yes. Uh, turn SC Linux to Disabled. Next. And you might want to set the date and time. Or just click Next. Create a user that's not root. And give it a password. Okay, click forward, click forward, click finish. And now we should be done and we can log in and grab those video drivers we need. So now I'm gonna install the VMware tools. It'll just make it easier to interact with the virtual machine. So click Install VMware Tools. Click Yes. Once it loads the CD, you'll get this pop-up window, and we're going to open a terminal. To type the command CD Media VMware Tools, and we're going to type this command right here. Tar XF, the VMware Tools file, minus capital C, slash TMP. Then we're going to type cd slash tmp and then do the cd to vm tools distrib file directory and we're going to run dot slash vmware minus install dot pl minus minus default and that will install the the vmware drivers and tools and now that it's done let's go ahead and log out So now we're going to go ahead and find the video drivers and package them up into something that we can put on the other machine. Now I'm mounting a USB device because it's the easiest way to get things between these two machines. Okay, so now we'll open a terminal. And this is just going to grab a DRM shared library. And we're going, going to run this command with here. us. Well, it's going to create a file and put that file name in it. And then later on, we're going to package everything up together. Now let's just check to make sure those file names actually got put in the file that we're going to use as our master list of files. And now we're going to run this find command to get all the shared libraries that deal with the video drivers and also save them save their names to that same file that we created for the libdrm and now i'm just checking to make sure that they actually the file names got put in there and they did great Now we're going to move to that USB stick that I put in, and we're going to copy all those files in that, that file list to an archive with this command right here. Now I'm just going to verify they actually got packaged up. You don't have to do this step. So now we're going to go ahead and unmount the USB drive. And we're going to then take it out of this VM, remove it from this VM once it says it's safe to remove. And then we're going to put it into a different VM, the other VM that we will use to test things. So let's put that, let's start out the Mega Touch. And we're going to want to boot that to that 
run level four that we did previously. Okay, so now we have a shell and we're going to install the USB storage module with INS mod space USB hyphen storage. And then we're gonna to have to tell the virtual machine to put the USB drive in. That will take a second. And now we're gonna to have to create a directory for this. We're gonna mkdir space mmta. And we have to mount that USB drive. Mount space slash dev slash sda1 slash mmt slash a. And we can cd into there. And we can now extract those files those video files with the command tar space xf space video file dot tar space minus capital C space slash. Now let's take a look at the file user local bin install underscore x in it. What it does is it configures the x server with this line that I'm typing in manually. And now we're going to go ahead and start the actual graphics environment with the installer running. And we see the installer starts with the graphics and now we have a motherboard issue. So now that we know that the graphics drivers are working, let's go ahead and update that install image, that install ISO to include those files already. So we don't have to do the USB mounting and untiring. Okay, so we're gonna go into that directory MT bulk mega touch installer root dev where we unpack that in an RD file. We're going to mount that USB stick and we're going to now become root with sudo and then we're going to untar those video drivers into this directory that we will then add to the ISO image. So now that we've untarred them, we're going to create a new in an RD file with this command right here. Now we're going to move into that new installer directory where we where we put that we edited the bootloader. And here I just made a script to actually do the command that makes the ISO. So I'm just going to um, run this command here. So now I'm going to copy that ISO file into my desktop so I can use that as the installer for the virtual machine. So I've copied it to my desktop. Now we're going to use that ISO to boot the via, uh, Megatouch virtual machine. Go ahead and start it up. And we shouldn't have to press any buttons this time. It should just start up. And hooray, it does. Although now we have a different error. We have the graphics, it's booting up, but we have invalid motherboard detected error. So we'll have to solve this in our next video.